My problem with IOPS as a number saying, hey, our, our system can do 500,000 IOPS is there's really a lot of little questions beneath that, like in that test, how many were read and writes, how, what, what was the uh, block size, you know, things like that, it, it, correct? Yeah, absolutely. That setting up a benchmark that can really show you for your environment uh, what you'll get out of IOPS out of a system is very complex. In fact, and I, we have benchmark facilities in three different places globally that spend all their time customizing IOPS tests to IOPS and throughput tests to a customer's workload. But it doesn't really matter what I put on a marketing data sheet as far as the high end of our IOPS. What it, I mean, that certainly tells you the limit of a best case scenario. And of course, we market best case scenarios as a marketing department. But when a customer really looks at their applications, their I.O. characteristics, and the systems they're going to buy. And again, this is why I love this Flash 102 topic, is the system you buy will not necessarily deliver the same IOPS depending on your workload, depending if you're read intensive, if you're write intensive, what sort of block sizes do you have, what is the I.O. pattern that you're using, what kind of SSDs are going into your Flash array. All of those things matter a lot in, in what kind of expectations you should be able to set as far as what your end-to-end -end workload can really deliver from IOPS, not just the box that you buy for storage.